Good evening and welcome to our study again tonight. Before I begin, let me tell you about, again, the announcements that we've been making. We're going to do an in-person study on Wednesdays, on, excuse me, Thursdays, starting June 1st, 6.30 at um, 119, St. Vincent's 119. That is, you can find that on more uh, information and details on how to get there on markcarell.com. So I, w- I would hope and pray that uh, you can make it. We're looking forward to it. I'm going to give you in the news tonight, but I'm going to do this a little bit different than what we normally do. Matter of fact, tonight I'm interrupting my regular news to bring you this. And if it can advance, I can be able to do it for you. Let's see right here. Breaking prophetic news. This is something that's brand new, something that the Lord just showed me. I've been studying a bit especially with something that's happened this week, today, actually yesterday. So what I'm about to share with you is a revelation update, a prediction that I have hinted at in the past, but that I want to update based on the, an article and several articles about a congressional hearing that took place yesterday before a Senate subcommittee on Capitol Hill. I feel this is such an important development that I'm devoting this entire segment of In the News to it. I told you this is a breaking prophetic news story, and I'm about to explain why. First off, a little teaching on Revelation. If you want an in-depth teaching, I want to point you to the extensive Revelation study I have done on YouTube called Revelation Revealed. To update you, let me briefly explain the timeline of Revelation. Of course, at this point, I can't uh, teach all of Revelation, but I want to get those of you who are not familiar with it, at least a little familiar with the timeline, so you'll understand where I'm going with this study, with this in the news tonight. This is a timeline, if you see that red, Arrow, that's where we are right now, prophetically. Uh, this is the present church age. You will see those yellow brackets, or those two arrows, one going up, one going down. That's the return of Christ. One is in the air uh, and will be the judgment seat of Christ where we are judged by our, our works. You're not judged to hell. You're judged to give rewards. And we will be taking, we will be doing the marriage supper of the Lamb for the seven years that transpires on the earth, correlating with it, the seven-year tribulation. The beginning of the seven-year tribulation, three and a half years, is called mild tribulation, the beginning of sorrows. The end of it is great tribulation, much more uh, serious consequences for the plagues. And in the middle is the abomination of desolation that the Antichrist does. And then, of course, you'll have Christ returning uh, physically on Mount of Olives and then also going to, to Armageddon, of course, the thousand millennium, final judgment of the wicked dead, then eternity. So let's back up a little bit. Let's look at the abomination of desolation. <clears throat> that will happen exactly three and a half years into the tribulation. Now when it happens, uh, we will have the Antichrist declaring himself God on a rebuilt Solomon's temple. And before I get any further, I understand what some of you are going to say. Some of you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Some believe in a mid-tribulation rapture. Some believe in a post-tribulation rapture. Uh, spare your, spare your, t- your text to me. Um, I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. You're entitled to believe whatever you want. Uh, But um, I do believe that that, there's lots of of concrete proof for that. Although I don't have time to share it tonight, I do want to talk to you about the abomination of desolation. Again, now concentrate on this midpoint of the seven-year tribulation uh, called the abomination of desolation. It's where, again, Antichrist demands worship in the rebuilt temple of Solomon. Let me again reemphasize this could be brand new teaching tonight. I've never taught this before. It's brand new. So we know that the temple will be rebuilt before he does this abominable act. I don't believe it will be built before the tribulation, before the rapture. I believe it will be built in that first three and a half years. Um, We know that 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 will be built. And we also know that the building of the third temple is on the way. We'll tell you about that in a moment. As an example, before I tell you the, the startling prophetic news this week, let's talk about the nows of the process to rebuild the temple the what's happening right now in preparation for the rebuilding of the temple. I've gone over some of this before, but I just want to reemphasize it. Right now, since 1990, for over 23 years, the Temple Mount Faithful have carried this to the Temple Mount. It's the cornerstone. They are are bent on building the new temple. They have been blocked, you see in a moment, uh, an article, uh, time after time, but uh, it's getting closer and closer for them to actually lay this cornerstone. This is the third temple cornerstone to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem for the start of the rebuilding of the third temple. By the way, it's six and a half tons. This is from the Temple Mount Faithful website. Since the year 1990, we have carried the cornerstone again and again to the Holy Temple Mount. Unfortunately, 
the Israeli authorities have still not been ready for such action. They continue to compromise with the Islamic Arab pressure and do not allow us to lay the cornerstone on the Holy Temple and to mount and to start the process of building the third Holy Temple. The cornerstone is now located on a biblical hill not far from the Holy Temple Mount and I have seen it many times, waiting for the right moment to be laid on the Holy Temple Mount that no doubt is soon to come and will be the first step for the building of the third Holy Temple. That's your first right now. Let me give you another right now. Also right now, there is a full-size solid gold menorah that is sitting in, a, in Jerusalem right now in the a place to be placed in the rebuilt te third temple. And right now, there are high priest garments made by the, to the specifications of Scripture to be worn by the future high priest in the Holy of Holies in the rebuilt third temple of Solomon. Also right now, there are, a ha there are hundreds of flesh pots and pans and hooks and temple pots and instruments that have already been made for the use in the soon coming third temple. Not to mention the right now of actual living, breeding red heifers that are in Israel ready to purify the sacrifices by their ashes in the rebuilt third temple according to Numbers chapter 19. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron saying, this is the ordinance of the law which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. Let me remind you that it's taken almost 35 years for them to develop a red heifer with no blemish. And you shall give her to Eleazar the priest, high priest, that he may bring her forth outside the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. One shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin, her flesh, her blood, with her dung shall he burn her. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer, lay them up upon, without the camp in a clean place, and it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water of separation. It is a purification for sin. That temple cannot be built without being purified by the ashes of a red heifer. heifer. A high priest cannot be ordained unless he is purified by the ashes of a red heifer. heifer. And he that gathers the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. And it shall be unto the children of Israel and unto the stranger that sojourneth among them for a statue forever. So I, I hope you're getting all of the right nows. I told you all of these right nows because they're very important to the rebuilding of this temple where Antichrist is going to offer himself as a God. Right now, there are, there are, uh, there are architectural plans to build the third temple and videos circulating all over Israel uh, showing it being rebuilt. It's very graphic. Right now, there is a full-scale menorah, as I told you, waiting to be placed in that temple. Right now, there is a cornerstone that has been attempted to be laid on the Temple Mount since 1990. Right now, there are priestly garments already made for the first high priest to wear in that rebuilt temple. Right now, there are flesh pots, utensils, and pots made that will be used for the daily sacrifices. And right now, there's a herd of red heifers without spot or blemish on a farm in Israel, ready to be sacrificed, and their ashes placed upon the high priest and the tabernacle to purify it for service. And that's the right now of the third temple progression. But what I'm about to share with you tonight is the right now of another end time prophecy unfolding right in front of our eyes. And what happened just yesterday to cause me to rewrite my in the news tonight and how it, would, how it will, I believe, directly relate to a cryptic end time event that will affect the entire world. Let me begin by setting it up for you tonight. Almost eight years ago now, I did a message on Hanson Robotics and something called AI, artificial intelligence. I showed you these pictures. That's Sophia. These are Hanson's, Hanson's AI creations. They're robots controlled with AI. Sophia, by the way, has been updated, but let me just tell you what's been happening with her. In October 2017, Sophia was granted Saudi Arabian citizenship as she addressed the entire congregation of their, of their party, their parties in Saudi Arabia. She became the first robot to receive legal personhood in any country. In November 2017, Sophia was named the United Nations Development Program's first innovation champion and is the first non-human to be given a United Nations title. But Sophia has come up 
a little bit away from that, in 2020. She is now available as an alpha version for research, academic, and B2B applications. It means you can buy Sophia. Sophia 2020 com combines our award-winning Hanson patented robotics hardware and software with unmatched robotics design and artistry. Sophia 2020 includes Hanson Robotics renowned facial expressions. She can react to any facial expression you have, gestural arms and hands, autonomous social interactions, an integrated SDK, and a choice of mobility bases, including a self-navigating option. She can walk. Hanson Robotics now brings you a cognitive robotics. They can think. Now I understand what you're saying. It's AI thinking, but we'll explain that in a moment. A cognitive robotics platform here to help you solve today's problems and build our future for tomorrow. Now, let me tell you, this is where she has gone on. She's been, she's been also accompanied by a, another one, Han. That's the male counterpart. Matter of fact, I saw an interview where they were on stage together and they were conversing on some pretty heavy duty topics extemporaneously back and forth. Remember, in their AI connection and their algorithms, they can tap any knowledge in the world instantaneously. Anything on the internet, anything instantaneously. So it's pretty scary when you think about it, but she has since been joined by more sophisticated AI robots. This is Han. This is Bina. This is the newest one, Philip. And Philip is an amazing AI robot. So this is just Hanson Robotics. Now, this is the now. Uh, we have advanced in AI technology way beyond this. Way, way beyond Sophia, Han, Bina, and Philip. And even Elon Musk is warning us right now. There's a chance AI goes wrong and destroys humanity. So much so that Congress and even the leading developer of AI, te AI technology now are extremely worried. Which brings me to yesterday, or what I would call right now. Let me read you one of the many articles that came out just today about the meeting yesterday. Senators use hearings to explore regulations on artificial intelligence. Lawmakers are looking to build rules for AI as the technology comes into greater public consciousness. This is Sam Altman. Uh, he is way, way beyond Hanson Robotics. Uh, on Tuesday, Sam Altman, the chief executive of the San Francisco startup Open AI, testified before members of the Senate subcommittee and largely agreed with them on the need to regulate the increasingly powerful AI technology being created inside his company and others like Google and Microsoft. In his first testimony before Congress, Mr. Altman implored lawmakers to regulate artificial intelligence as members of the committee displayed a budding understanding of this technology. The hearing underscored the deep uneasiness felt by technolog technologists and government over AI's potential harms to humanity. The appearance of Mr. Altman, a 38-year-old Stanford University dropout and tech entrepreneur was his christening as the leading figure in AI technology. Mr. Altman also talked about his company's technology at a dinner with dozens of House members on Monday night and met privately with a number of senators before the hearing. That's all this week. He offered a loose framework to manage what happens next with the fast developing systems that some believe could fundamentally change our world, our economy, and our society. Quote, I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. And we want to be vocal about that, he said. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening. Tech giants have poured effort and billions of dollars into what they say is a transformative technology, even amidst rising concerns about AI's role in spreading misinformation, killing jobs, and one day, listen, matching human intelligence. Mr. Just follow me tonight because I'm going to bring you to a prophecy that's going to blow you away. Mr. Altman was joined at the hearing by Christina Montgomery, IBM's Chief Privacy and Trust Officer, and Gary Marcus, a well-known professor and frequent critic of AI technology. Mr. Altman said his company's technology may destroy some jobs and it will be important for government to figure out how we want to mitigate that. He proposed the creation of an agency that issues licenses for the development of large-scale AI models. Man, when you get the government involved in it, you got some problems. It's unclear how lawmakers would respond to the call to regulate AI. The track record for Congress on such tech regulation, regulations is grim. Senator Richard Blumenthal, Democrat of Connecticut, chairman of the Senate panel, 
said the hearing was to learn more about the potential benefits and harmful effects of AI to eventually write the rules for it. Members of the subcommittee suggested an independent agency to oversee AI, rules that force companies to disclose how their models work and the data that set, sets they use. I'm quoting this, the devil will be in the details, said Sarah Myers West, managing director of AI Now Institute. She said Mr. Altman's suggestions for regulations don't go far enough and should include limits on how AI is used in, pol in policing and the use of biometric data. She noted that Mr. Altman didn't show any indication of slowing down the development of OpenAI's chat GPT tool. It's such an irony seeing the posture, she said, about the concerns of harms by people who are rapidly releasing into commercial use the system responsible for those very harms. Some subcommittee members also showed a reluctance to clamp down too strongly on an industry with great economic promise for the United States and that competes directly with adversaries such as China. Some of the toughest questions and comments towards Mr. Altman came from Dr. Marcus, who noted OpenAI hasn't been transparent about the data it uses to develop its systems. We are facing a perfect storm, he said, of corporate irresponsibility, widespread deployment, lack of adequate regulation, and inherent unreliability. Altman envisioned two paths the technology can take, liking its future to either the printing press, which empowered people throughout the world by spreading information, or the atom bomb, which he called a huge technological breakthrough, but the consequences were severe, terrible, and continue to haunt us until this day. So why am I calling this a new revelation prophecy that will shortly be fulfilled? This is why. Here's the connection I want to make. And he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. What? For decades, decades, teachers and Bible prophecy teachers taught that this image of the beast was like a golden false god, a statue, like the image of Zeus in the Pantheon, or like the image of Caesar in the temple, or some other statue of a human's attempt to make himself a god. Some modern artist depicted an image of the Antichrist mentioned in Revelation 13 to look like this, some type of ancient god spread in the, in the Holy of Holies that the, anti, that the, that the false prophet's gonna make come alive. Some, some even imagine the, the Baphomet image coming alive. But many think it will be an image of Antichrist himself, a statue made to come to life that looks just like him. But here's my present take on what I believe the image of the beast will be. So are you ready? Okay. I believe the image of the beast will be a walking, talking AI robot that looks just like the real Antichrist. That is probably where AI is heading. When I hear about governments getting involved, when I hear about information that could be, that could be constantly back and forth uh, within, the, within this AI, it's something that's going to look like it's living. It's something that's gonna talk like it's living. And let me just flesh it out a little bit more with the Revelation so you know. Just like the beast, this AI will be. Revelation 13, uh, uh, starting with verse 11. And behold, another beast come out, coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. This is the false prophet. And he exercised all the power of the first beast, that's the Antichrist before him, and caused the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, the Antichrist, whose deadly wound was healed. We're going to talk about that as it, as it relates to AI. And deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. Is that an AI robot? Which had a wound by a sword, the beast did, and did live. Look at verse 13. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, I'm gonna really kind of flesh that out for you tonight. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and on their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, except he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, and man, this dovetails tonight. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and six. All right, the second beast, the false prophet, makes an image to the first beast, the Antichrist, which had a deadly wound and was healed. The Antichrist had a deadly wound and was healed. That's most likely 
an assassination that kills the Antichrist, but he is demonically brought back to life by Satan, maybe Satan himself. Now, instead of him being out in public again, the second beast gives life to an image, the image of the Antichrist, an AI, an artificial life, to an image, a robot, that looks just like the first beast, that is the, his image, that causes it, this image, this, if it's an AI or robot that I'm postulating, it causes, not the Antichrist, it causes both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark of the beast in their hand or their forehead. How? Well, here it is. These AIs can tap into all knowledge of the internet, of social media, police files, etc., etc., etc. They have everything. It's called their massive algorithms can do it effortlessly. So what is an algorithm? Well, get ready. This is the description from Wikipedia. In mathematics, numbers, and computer science, an algorithm is a finite sequence of rigorous instructions, typically used to solve a class of specific problems or to perform a computation. Algorithms are used as specifications for performing calculating, calculations and data processing, both small and great, rich and poor, it's everyone. How does this image have control of everyone. It's called an algorithm. They will, have, they will be able to access anything they want. And by the way, a finite sequence, that's a series of numbers. A series of numbers? Well, get ready. Here is wisdom. Let him as understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is, let me put a parenthesis here, his number is a, seri is a sequence. It's a series of numbers. 600, 3 score, and 6. 666 is a sequence is what algorithms tap into. It's unbelievable. It's a sequence. By the way, I started to search the internet. Let me see if I have it here. Ah, after searching the internet, I found multiple sites for a new system called Algorithm 666. It's a secular thing. Here's an article heading on the new system as it appears on Google search. I encourage you to search this out. Algorithm 666, that's all you gotta put in. Shabis, a mathematical software package for locating and evaluating roots of systems of nonlinear equations. What does that mean? It means you can locate anything using this algorithm. Now watch, because I have never heard this taught before. No doubt someone will take this teaching of mine and write a book, but I'm telling you, this is, looks like exactly what's going to happen. But that's not why I'm pointing it out. I'm doing it and I'm teaching it because I believe God has shown me this to alert you to just how close we are to the Lord's return the right now. For unsaved man, it's extremely scary. But for us, it's extremely exciting. Luke 21, 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, the right now, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. So tonight, I wanted to give you that as in the news. I'm concerned. I'm concerned for the world. There are already, even the secular world, Elon Musk, is saying this can destroy mankind. Let me tell you, once it's in the government's hands, can you imagine a Hitler? Hitler had 14 attempts on his life. If he, had, if he had access to an AI robot that looked like him, I promise you, he would have been in that bunker most of his time. And that AI would have been doing it. It's pretty scary. It's pretty, it's pretty uh, skin churning and uh, upsetting to people who don't know about it. Unfortunately, the ones that don't know about it, don't know about it, but it's coming. And as you are a student of the Bible, student of the word, I'm telling you that this is something I've never taught before. And I'm, I, I, can I be sure, positive that's what it's going to be? I'm not positive on anything in the future like that. Uh, but I do know that it gives us hints in Scripture, all over Scripture. And it looks like technology is catching up. Can you imagine John the Revelator seeing this for the first time? Seeing an AI and the, and the beast and the image of the beast? Obviously, it was, pretty, it was something that he had to write down and share with the churches. So... I hope you, en hope you enjoyed understanding that prophecy is happening within your midst. Even though, again, it's, it's spine chilling, it's, it's good to know that you're on the right side, that God's already forewarned us of the things that Congress and the world is, and Elon Musk is frightful of. All right, that's in the news for tonight, that one article. Let's go on.